So why do so many people hate the Catholic Church? Well, the world hates the Catholic Church for several reasons. One, they hate absolutes. You know, I remember uh, Josh McDowell back in the day. Uh, he's a Protestant pastor, real good apologist. And uh, he gave a story about these college kids. And uh, they, didn't see, so, they hadn't seen each other since high school. And they're like, you know, getting ready to graduate from college. And uh, they bumped into each other. And one guy's like, hey, what's up, man? He's like, yeah, I've been searching, man. I'm searching for the truth. You know, I've been studying Hinduism, just trying to find the truth. And everyone's like, oh, man, that's cool, man. That's cool. And then one guy is like, yeah, I've been, I've been studying Buddha. I'm, you know, I'm trying to learn the truth. And, you know, and the next guy is like, yeah, you know, I've been looking at, you know, all these Eastern mysticism and, and all these Eastern religions also. And, uh, you know, I'm really trying to find the truth, bro. And then the one guy said, man, I found the truth. <laughs> I found Jesus. He is the truth, the way and the life. And they're like, that's not cool. <laughs> so everybody wants to search but nobody wants to find and uh because there are absolutes you know jesus said he is the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father but through him so you know and um jesus established the church matthew 16 18 through 19 and he gave that church authority and people don't like that and jesus told his church listen they persecuted me and they hated me so they're going to persecute you and hate you and all the apostles were killed except for saint john and the first 30 popes were all killed all for the sake of the gospel because the world hated them the world hates the absolutes of christianity and the world hates authentic catholic christianity because we haven't changed they hate the moral absolutes as well you know, the Didache, historians say, was written in 50 AD. The apostles were still alive. In fact, a lot of people thought um, the apostles may have written it, but uh, most historians don't think so. But it was the time of the apostles, and it was someone who knew the apostles and knew the apostles' teachings. And just think about that. That's 50 AD. The apostles are still alive. The church didn't canonize the bible to say actually okay these are the inspired words of god until 382 a.d at the council of rome then later they confirmed it in the 390s at uh, hippo and carthage in those councils so imagine 50 a.d and, and and it's amazing the continuity of the catholic churches it's seamless i mean there's no there's no difference in you know the didache and the bible it, it's you could almost think you're reading the Bible. And, and that's why when the Catholic Church was debating which books should belong in the Bible, some of the bishops thought the Didache was inspired and they prayed and debated. And they said, no, it's, it's worthy of reading. It's a great, great book, but it's not inspired by God. It doesn't belong in the Bible. But the Didache in 50 AD gives abs, you know, more absolutes that we, we hold true today and the world hates it. You know, um, you know, it talks about abortion. Uh, abortion is a sin, you know, and for years, you know, like in the 60s and 70s, everyone's like, oh, it's a woman's body. It's a woman's right. But science finally caught up to the church. And you can see with a 4D uh, ultrasound that that's a separate body. That's a human life. That's a baby. And even, um, you know, world renowned geneticists in the 1970s, said based on genetics life begins at conception so science finally caught up with the church and yet people still deny the truth because they want what they want you know it's my body it's my choice i don't care you know they won't face the truth no it's it's a baby and they will brutally butcher their own child in their womb because they're so deceived by their own wants and selfishness and evilness you know the um the world hates us because we say homosexual acts is a sin you know again in the didache in 50 ad called it out as a sin you know and to still today the catholic church calls it out as a sin you know and it, it's it's kind of funny because you know um when I came back to the Catholic Church, I had uh, met a very feminine priest, but I gave him the benefit of the doubt because, you know, 
I knew Protestants that were feminine and, you know, they got married and, you know, um, until they got married, they were celibate and God changed them and took away that same sex attraction, but they still seemed a little less manly than I would think they should be, you know, but, um, so I thought, okay, well, maybe he was a priest and he knew that he was feminine, but he took a vow of celibacy, you know, just like, you know, just like a, a single guy would take a vow of celibacy if he, if he wasn't married, you know, whether you're a priest or not, sex outside of marriage is a sin. So I kind of, you know, gave him the benefit of doubt because he never said anything unorthodox to me. You know, we talked about the faith and I had come over and I was all, you know, I, I told him I really loved, you know, Pope Francis. And oh, he said, oh, yeah, I love him, too. But I think we loved him for different reasons. I, I said, you know, I loved him because he reached out to evangelicals, which I was one. And a lot of guys I respected, you know, Pentecostals like Louis Palau, charismatic. It's like uh, Tony Palmer was saying, this guy's a charismatic Catholic. This guy loves the lord and he's on fire and and um you know i was like wow you know he's gonna bring some good changes to the church and the pat and the priest was like yeah you know we're expecting him to bring some really good change but then years later this priest of 25 years just resigned out of the blue didn't tell anybody why or you know i'm sure he told the bishop why but nobody else knows why and i'm um, I don't know if it's a coincidence, but it was like a week after Pope Francis said the church cannot bless same-sex marriage because it cannot bless sin. And I think people got confused with Pope Francis because early on someone said, well, what if a homosexual seeks out God? Can he get into heaven? And Pope Francis said, who am I to judge? <laughs> you know? And I would say the same thing. Who am I to judge? Yeah, I don't know the person's heart. Only God knows, you know. Um, and then, you know, he talked about homosexuals should have rights. You know, they shouldn't be, like, killed in Muslim countries because of their uh, sexual orientation. Uh, I don't think that's anything radical or liberal. I think that's, you know, common sense. But he also told Italian bishops, you know, someone shows a hint of femininity don't allow them into the seminary because we can't afford to allow homosexuals into the seminary it's very dangerous because you know the uh, child sex abuse scandal turns out they were all homosexuals and um uh, you know so the world hates us for that and and then of course they're going to point out you know we, we don't hate you we don't hate you because of what you believe. We hate you because of what you do. All your priests are pedophiles. When the fact, and I've made several videos, on, I gave you the statistics, and they're out there for you to see, that the Catholic Church had less child sex abuse than any than the Protestant Church as a whole. That the Catholic Church has way less, and the, and the Protestant Church way less, even if you combine all the churches in Protestantism and Catholicism, way less than United States public schools. <laughs> And that's based on a, a U.S. Department of Education study uh, by Dr. Uh, Shakeshef, Carol Shakeshef. You can look that up. So, you know, but they never attack the public school pedophiles. They never attack the Protestant. They're always attacking the Catholic Church because they know this is the authentic church that never changes. You know, Protestantism, it changes, you know, it changes with the culture. You know, I mean, when when the when the Protestants broke away from us... You know, even Martin Luther believed the Bible when it came to the Eucharist, you know, that Jesus said, this is my body. He literally said, this is my body, this is my blood. And no one ever denied that. That was that was never an argument, an argument until like 10 years later when the modernist who didn't believe in any miracles, thought all miracles and spiritual gifts ceased, um, Oliver Zwingli said it's just symbolic, basically took a form of Gnosticism and uh, and Docetism that was condemned in the early centuries of the church where they believed matter was evil, you know, so they couldn't believe that God would use something, would use matter, mere bread and, and become his body and blood. You know, most Protestants don't know where that heresy came from, that they did not Eucharist is the body and blood of Christ. But St. Ignatius of Antioch, who was, who was taught by the apostle John, condemned that. And he condemned anyone, he condemned the heresy of Gnosticism, and he also condemned anyone who uh, would say the bread does not literally become the body and blood of Jesus Christ. I mean, this is, this is ancient church history. This is Bible. This is truth. 
you know? And that's why in 382 AD and 393, when they were debating the canon of scripture, a lot of the letters of St. Ignatius of Antioch, some people thought should have been in the Bible, but they chose not to. But again, they're useful for history and they're useful for reading. Just like a lot of Baptists have, you know, uh, readings from Charles Spurgeon to, to understand, you know, certain doctrines. We have readings from the guys who were taught by the guys who wrote the Bible. So, so even our evangelical brothers hate the Catholic Church. You know, I, I, I went, I visited an evangelical brother once on Christmas. I'm like, you pagan, you need to repent of your idolatry. And he's like, bro, what are you talking about? I'm like, you have a manger in Mary. <laughs> you have statues. You have pagan statues on your on your lawn. He's like, they're not pagan statues. They're statues of Mary and, and uh, Jesus. I'm like, exactly. Just like our statues in our churches that we use to help us remember the great saints of old and help us to remember what the Lord did for us. You know, the world hates the crucifix because it reminds them of their sin. And Jesus said, you know, he came into the light, came into the world, but the world hated the light. The darkness hated the light. The crucifix shows you your, what's, how ugly sin is, you know? Even our Protestant brothers and sisters get offended at the crucifix. They want to see the empty cross. They don't want to know the full gospel. They don't want to know the fullness of the faith. They just want to know, I'm saved, once saved, always saved. Everything is good. I can name it and claim it, you know? They forget the part where Jesus said, you need to deny yourself. You need to pick up your cross and follow me. Crosses are heavy. Crosses have splinters. It's not easy to carry your cross. You know, I met so many evangelicals when I was an evangelical that used to be Catholic, but they got divorced. So they became evangelical because the Catholic Church still teaches divorce is a sin like they did in the first century. <laughs> the Didache again throughout the church. The church hasn't changed. The church has not changed. And the world hates the church. You know, even the Satanists know the Catholic Church is an authentic church. That's why they have black masses. That's why they mock the mass, the sacrifice of the mass, because they know that's the holiest worship. That is the highest form of worship of Jesus Christ. The Baptists and Presbyterians and non-denominational guys, they know nothing about worship. They honor God, they praise him, but they know nothing about true worship because they don't have the Eucharist. They don't have the sacrifice of the mass. It's foreign to them. It was foreign to me, but it wasn't foreign to the first century church. It wasn't foreign to the ancient church. And it's not foreign to the Satanists. They know the mass is holy. They know the power of the mass. That's why they have black masses. They don't, they don't imitate and make fun of Baptist church services or Presbyterian or non-denominational. No, they have black masses because they know it's holy. They know it's spiritual. And again, our Protestant brothers don't believe there's, there's power in matter. You know, they don't even believe baptism has power. It's just symbolic. When the early church taught, 1 Peter 3.21, baptism now saves you. Unless you're born again of water and the spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. So our evangelicals hate us. They hate the church because they think we're idolaters. We, you know, we, 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 we're superstitious. We believe, you know, water's got power. Bread's got power. You know, it does. <laughs> the blood of Christ blood of Christ is what saves you. And Jesus says, unless you drink my blood and eat my flesh, you cannot see, you, you don't have eternal life. You have no life. But if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have eternal life. So the world and non-Catholic Christians hate the church because we don't change. I mean, up until 1960, every church, every single Christian denomination believes artificial birth control is a sin. Now only the Catholic church teaches that. You know, every church used to teach homosexuality was a sin. Now a lot of churches are saying, well, you know, everybody's different. We don't know, you know. You know, some churches still stand up against it, that it's a sin. You know, same thing with abortion. A lot of churches are pro-choice, you know. It's, 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 it's unbelievable. But the Catholic Church doesn't change, you know. The Catholic Church has not changed in 2,000 years. It's the church Jesus established. It's the church that uh he's coming back for you know and and people hate people hate it you know jesus gave the church authority he gave the church authority to judge he said listen if a brother sins go to him if he keeps in him bring a witness if he keeps in him bring him before the church to be judged you know the catholic church forgives he gave that power to the church in john uh 2023 20, he said that a church who sins you forgive or forgiven who sins you retain or retained 
you know? Nobody wants that. It makes evangelicals heads explode. I don't have to go to a priest. I can just go, and, you know, I can sin all I want. And if I want to apologize, I'll go to God myself and confess my sin. I don't need to go to the church, you know? They make up their own religion, you know? <laughs> that 42,000 different uh, Christ, uh, Protestant denominations making up their own doctrines. The new ones opening up every day. But we have the ancient church and the Catholic church, you know? And you're like... Oh well, man, they're going to hate me. They're going to persecute me. They hated Jesus. They persecuted him. They crucified him. They killed all his apostles. They killed our first 30 popes. Man, why should I become a Catholic Christian? Isn't it a lot easier to, isn't it a lot easier just to become a Protestant, one saved, always saver, and not have to count my cost, not have to carry a cross? Isn't it better just to be in the world and, and just do what I want, live in the darkness? And I say again, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world yet, let, yet lose his own soul? You know, what do we got, 80, 90 years on this earth? We have eternity. Eternity in either heaven or hell. So you better make sure you got it right. You know, people make a, think a lot about buying a house and they put a lot of thought into what house. Think about the house you're going to live in for all eternity. and Put a lot of thought into it. And look at the evidence. The evidence is clear. The evidence is clear that Jesus Christ is who he said he was. And the Catholic Church are who we say we are. The evidence is overwhelming. So, um, and then on this earth, you know what? God is good. He gives us the Holy Spirit, which gives us supernatural joy. So even if you're being persecuted, you still have joy. He gives us supernatural peace that the world knows nothing about. Peace of mind, peace of heart. And he gives us hope. We have hope. And he gives us supernatural love to love one another. And the love of our neighbor as ourself. Peace, hope, and love. There's, there's nothing better. The greatest is love. But there's nothing better. And it all comes from God's grace. His grace alone fills us. And we can go back to the well and be filled every day with his grace. You know, and Jesus also said, they persecuted me. They hated me. But he said, some listen to him and they'll listen to us. So share his grace, you know. Jesus sent his apostles out with two, you know, in twos. And they would go to everybody's house. And if they welcomed them, they would heal everyone in the house. If they didn't welcome them, he said, you know, wipe the dust from your feet and keep it moving. You know, we don't shove it down your throat. We present it to you. And if you want to hear, hear the healing words of Jesus Christ that gives you hope, peace, and love, praise the Lord. But if not, we'll just, you know, we'll pray for you. But we need to keep it moving and wipe the dust from our feet. It's the Christian way. So uh, hope this was helpful. I was thinking about this all morning. And I said, oh, man, I got I to gotta share this. So God bless and stay Catholic. Got to go to work.